Speaker is Mr. John S. Quarterman. Okay. Hi, <clears throat> John Gordon. I still got more beakers than I need if anybody wants them. Uh, you may wonder what the camera's for. Uh, I'm with a little outfit called Lounge Area Knowledge Exchange. Lounge is in the county name. What we do is uh, we take videos of meetings and we stick them on YouTube. For example, last night's meeting in Valdosta will be up shortly. It takes a lot of process, a couple hours of videos. As well this one, the whole thing. Can you make sure you're speaking to the mic? I think we are releasing it just a little bit. As well as this one. The videos of the whole thing will be up on YouTube. Uh, another thing we do is open records requests. Uh, for example, we filed an open records request with the South Georgia Regional Library Board about the request for proposals for uh, an architect for a library they were considering building. And we got in response the request for proposals, all the proposals, all the agendas and minutes and board packets for all the board meetings of the relevant period. That was for a $10 million project. Now, you've heard the response to the request from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission for an RFP and proposals for an $8 million project. Nothing. That's the kind of transparency you're getting. Well, another thing that we do is we travel occasionally at some distance. We went, for example, to Gilchrist County, Florida, county seat Trenton, Florida. It's about three hours south of here. The Gilchrist County Commission held a session where they had appointed a citizens committee to come up with questions to ask the pipeline company, and they did. And all five commissioners chipped in whenever the pipeline company wasn't answering, which was most of the time, as did the county administrator and the county attorney. That's the best county performance I've ever seen, but I do want to congratulate the Colquitt County Commission for actually passing a resolution. I've seen nobody else do that. That's great. Now, among those questions, oh, the, and after an hour of that, they opened it up for anyone from anywhere to ask questions. One of the questions that was asked by many people was, what about jobs? You've heard that question here tonight. Would there be any local jobs? The answer from the Sable Trail, or I should say Spectra Wraps, some of whom are here tonight, was that, well, they would have a job there and people could apply. There was basically cross-examination in which it came out that uh, apparently uh, the pipeline company has already uh, put out a request for contractors for doing the installation and uh, maybe even picked one, so who would be doing any hiring would be the contractors. Now, if you were a, a pipeline company from Houston that wanted to run through three states and dozens of counties as rapidly as possible to install a pipeline, and you wanted people that need a job, would you be picking them up along each county along the way? And if you've talked to anybody that's seen one of these things put in, that's not what happened. They bring the crews with them. Most times they don't even stay in the local hotel rooms. They bring their own caravan so they can sleep in them, RVs and such. Uh, also, at Gilchrist County Commission, various people asked about safety. And uh, so what about the safety record of this pipeline? And the, pipeline company reps said, well, um, uh, they had no immediate answer, but they will be putting the, a link to the files from the Pipeline Hazardous Material Safety Agency, uh, which PHMSA, usually pronounced FIMSA here, on the Sable Trail website. Well, that, that's good, a little late, uh, like two or three months, I've seen those questions asked, they finally get around to doing that. But FEMSA would not tell you about the $15 million record fine against Spectra, the parent company, then known as Texas Eastern Pipeline Company, for uh, spilling PCBs at, 30, at I think it's 89 locations along that pipeline. It also wouldn't tell you, this isn't even on the EPA side, about an even larger fine by the state of Pennsylvania for those PCBs. The FEMSA files also won't tell you about the reports from the National Transportation Safety Board, including one about the fire in Edison, New Jersey, that evacuated thousands of people, made 
a couple of hundred people homeless and scared one along to death. These are all elements of the safety record of the pipeline company that you could ask them, as many of us have over our months, about their safety record, and they expressed a lack of familiarity with that. That's the kind of transparency that we're seeing. And uh, someone mentioned that they heard there might be a compressor station in Colquitt. Last night, a couple told me they got a map from the pipeline company saying there might be a compressor station in Lowndes. What kind of show game is this? I mean, I, I, I do thank you, as I have frequently before, for, and representatives, for the e-comment system. That is very useful, because citizens who file comments can see who else is filing comments. And that is very useful. But try asking them a simple question like, that less than 10% of pipeline uh, applications that are denied, give us a list. I asked that when they were last here in Moultrie and was promised a list. I have no list. I asked that last night. I have no list. If you can't put them on the website, at least give us the docket numbers. And tell us where we can find the letters with the details for why those were refused. And you'll also notice that none of you really got an answer to the question of, are you wasting your time here because this thing is going to be in the 90 plus percent that's approved? We hear stuff about, well, we'll take into, into, into consideration various uh, aspects of where it should be cited. And maybe uh, you heard a revelation here tonight that in some other states that required bearing at five feet deep. That's new. You actually heard a new piece of information. But you don't hear what would it take to convince FERC to deny the permit for this pipeline? I ask again, John Picano, FERC, and your contractor there, who, if I'm not mistaken, works for that company that you selected through the RFP and proposal that you won't reveal. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. But I'm asking the FERC reps, not the contractor, what would it take for FERC to deny a permit for this pipeline. Thanks, Carl. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Can I have to end the list? I'm going to cycle through. Uh, Mr. Garbrough, did you want to come up? Yes.